Hey my friends, look where I am! Woohoo! On the beach! So, so, so nice. You are getting like no makeup, no mic, nothing today. Just me in my happy place on the Oregon coast. Look at that. Good morning already from some people. I have my glasses on my head in case I have to have them to read, but hopefully I'll be able to do this without them. But yeah, I'm Susan Smith and today you are not in my studio. You are on my beach. I am on, you know, holidays, a little bit of work in holiday, and I'm coming to you every single day for the next, well, for 30 days in total, and today is day five, I believe, um, leading up to the 27th of October when my freehand quilting masterclass launches. And um, it's actually, well, I'll come back to that in a few minutes. I'm gonna chat with you a little bit about quilting beforehand. So yeah, it's a gorgeous, gorgeous, gorgeous morning, as you can see, so great. Okay. Today's topic, unrelated to the beach, is about quilt batting. So many of you ask about this, and a couple of days ago, maybe two or three, I posted a short little reel on all the platforms. You might have seen it on Facebook or Instagram or YouTube, or you might not have seen it at all. But it was me on a small quilt, and I was short of batting at the end, and it was a really simple way to splice batting. Well, I've gotten hundreds and hundreds of comments um, mostly glad to see that way of doing it, but also with some questions and concerns about that way of splicing batting. So if you want to see it in action, go back and look for that reel. There's a bright yellow backing and it's loaded on my long arm. So you'll be able to recognize it by that bright yellow. But if you can't understand it just by my description of it, then go back and have a look at that video. But essentially it involves laying a wide strip of new batting or, or another piece of batting and overlapping them and then cutting a scallopy, just with scissors, a scallopy edge so that both layers are cut with exactly the same curves. And those curves mean you never get a fold line or a delineation where that splice is. And then you pull out the little excess pieces that are overlapping, you scooch them together so they're nice and tightly, those scallops are butted up against each other, and then you lay your quilt back over and continue quilting. So one of the main questions that came up then was, don't you whip stitch that batting? How does it stay together? And my answer to that is this, you do need to make sure that whatever quilting you're laying over top is closely enough spaced that it's secured. So if I were whip stitching, it would be, you know, every inch or so. So I feel like if I quilt over that every inch or so, it's not gonna move anywhere. It's not gonna pull apart within my quilt or anything like that. It will be fully secure. So that's my answer to that question. Um, but again, the really important thing is that you do cut in curves. It doesn't matter how shallow. Oh gosh, sorry about the noise, beach traffic. Anyway, doesn't matter the shape of the curves or they don't have to be evenly spaced or anything like that because you're cutting both layers. And so whatever scallops you cut, they'll match. And I know others have done this before me with the batting too. I hadn't seen it done, but I saw people doing improv piecing in this way, right? When you cut both layers, the curves precisely match. So you can actually piece fabrics um, in a similar way and cutting matching curves in a similar way. So it works really well for the batting too. So let's check in with a couple good mornings and then we'll go on talking. And I'm curious to hear your feedback, your thoughts, if you happen to see that little reel or if you already knew that method and have tried it. Uh, good morning from Winthrop, Washington, Oklahoma. Okay, it turns out I do need the glasses. Kathy Koss, good morning. Maggie, have a lovely day. Ori, first time actually watching live. So glad you're here. Jana Bowman, back in Spokane, my hometown. Deb, good morning, it's beautiful here. Love the Rocky Coast. Oh my gosh, I do too. Ori says, I assume you need to make sure it's the same brand and loft. That's a really great point. I 100% agree with that. You want the same type of batting. And depending on what you're using, you might even wanna make sure the same side is up. Like if you've got a batting with a scrim, for example. So yes, that is important that it, it does match in every other way because you're just trying to butt it up and make it look absolutely seamless. You don't want anyone to ever be able to feel or see that splice. Daisy, show the beach, there it is. There it is, and I'm up a little ways, oh, probably 20 or 30 feet up so that you can see a little bit of the beach. And Taylor, first time live, welcome. And another Anne, I tried this method, works great, super. Tiffany's Quilting Life, good morning, Susan. Hi, Tiffany. Sherry in California, Jean in New Jersey, Tracy in Louisiana. You guys are coming in from everywhere, great. Sue Tap, hi from Gray's Lake, and she pressed send. Erin in Ohio, I wish I was there. Oh, yes, you do. <laughs> 
Zanita, good morning from Buffalo, New York. Yeah, this is just a beautiful, beautiful coast. We come here with some friends every fall and we often rent a house like a VRBO type of house because often there's six of us together. This year there's only four, so we actually rented a condo. And what's kind of fun is we're, we're just off the ocean, but we're up three stories. So our view from our little patio is spectacular. So maybe I'll do a patio video tomorrow. There would be less noise, I feel like. The traffic noise here is a bit over the top. Teresa, I did it on my granddaughter's baby quilt and it's nine years old and holding just fine. Great to know, so great to know. You know, I did get a few concerns from people like, I would not do that on a client quilt because, you know, I don't know about that. But my experience has been good with it and it's good to hear from some of you too. And like I said, as long as the quilting is close enough that it's held as securely as whip stitching would hold it, I don't see why not. And I know there are products out there like fusible things that you can iron on. I know that you can zigzag it and they're perfectly fine. And if you feel better with that, you know, be my guest. But I feel like that makes the batting feel a little bit different. So that's just my personal opinion. I love the butted up method. Selena, go Buffalo. Wendy, Colorado here. And Colorado Mountains, got it. Daisy, have a swim in the cold water or warm. Enjoy yourself. Okay, the water is absolutely frigid. I will definitely put my feet in the cold water, but I don't think swimming is an option. I'm sticking to the hot tub. <laughs> Donna Tabor in Grants Pass, Oregon. Catherine in Saskatchewan, fellow Canadian, Marine in Albany, Oregon. That's not too far away. Great. Anyway, that's my points on batting. And then I was gonna talk just a smidge and welcome comments from you about what you do with the batting scraps that still remain. Again, in my experience, I have found, I don't do multiple splices in a quilt, particularly in multiple directions. I have occasionally crossed them but gosh, it's hard to get those points to match up. Now, I feel like you could put row after row and it would be okay. Does that make sense? A layer, a layer, a layer. But I don't think that I would do seams or matches going both ways with the batting. I just find that's not as secure, um, my opinion. But a couple things I do with extra batting. One of them is I make uh, pot holders for use in the kitchen and I put several layers in them. Now, again, I know that there's a product that's heat reflective that most people purchase and use for pot holders, but my entire growing up life, my mother made pot holders either with leftover batting or leftover cut up flannel sheets, and we never burned our hands on them. So my opinion, I think that's a great use and I just chop them up into eight inch squares and I keep a little box of those handy whenever I feel like making a few pot holders, makes a nice little housewarming gift. Also, cultivate friends who make jelly roll rugs because they need the long thin strips. So I have a friend that does that and I literally give her kitchen garbage bags full of, you know, just the edges of quilts and you've got batting that's four or five inches wide by the length of a quilt. It's perfect for her. So she never has to buy batting for her projects. She just has to spend the time to cut it. Um, I have seen people snibble it up into little pieces and stuff pillows with it because it's the same type of material that would be in a pillow fill. Um, that can be a little bit messy. You could probably do it with rotary cutter too. Um, at one time I was making stuffed pet beds. So I was just buying pillowcases at secondhand stores and stuffing my both batting and even trimmings um, and threads and things, but all textiles into these pillowcases and donating them for pet beds. Now my local scraps does not want them anymore because they get chewed and messy and I can kind of see that. So I've lessened that one, but you know, maybe for your own pet, that would be an option. So that's one way to use up a bunch of textile scraps. So there's some ideas for you. Let's see if you have any ideas. Um, backing up a little. Ori, question on the batting. How do you feel batting? How do you feel if batting has scrim? I usually use quilter stream cotton and don't notice a difference on either side. I feel like if you can't notice a difference, then the final quilt won't have a difference in feel either. That's just off the cuff my answer to that one. So if it doesn't feel different, go for it. Gail, I tried your binding hack using the pin, worked great. Not sure which binding hack that was, but yay, I'm glad it worked for you. Denise, cut them up for my Swiffer. Good point, I had forgotten that one. So cut them into a rectangle and wrap them round and tuck them in just like a Swiffer cloth. Great point. They are certainly excellent dusters. Like I use them to dust the rails of my long arm machine and even um, the wheels um, on my rails. And certainly I use them for dry erase, um, like for markers, but for the eraser portion, little scraps of batting, 
it doesn't use up very much, but it's one more place to use them. So yeah. Sherry, I make design boards or use them in smaller projects like table runners. Yes, absolutely that. Absolutely that. Daisy, do you ever put two battings in a quilt? Yes, I do on occasion. It makes them fluffier and makes the quilting really show up. Also makes them a bit heavier. So you have to consider that. Tracy, I put old cut up towels or washcloths in my pot holders. Yes. I mean, our mothers and grandmothers did that for forever. So I see no reason to stop doing that, frankly. <laughs> Tracy, I make in the hoop stuffed animals with the small pieces of batting. Oh, that's a great idea. Gail, I use them for Swiffer too, plus dusting and cleaning. Yeah, and they do pick up dust very nicely and even loose threads. So for example, at a long arm, you have a huge long 12 foot table, which is a real dust collector. So yeah, when I have a little piece of, you know, long strip of batting, awkward piece, I just put it in my hand and dust the whole thing with that and it moisten it even with a spritz of water and it works great for that. Okay, you guys, look at that. I almost kept to my 10 minute, um, <laughs> my 10 minute goal. We're at 11. Thanks for joining me. I am going to be coming on air live every day, if you're just joining in now, every day until the 27th of October. So with some either tip or just conversation that relates to quilting. So feel free to join me here as often as you can. Be sure to click the like if you're enjoying, the thumbs up if you're enjoying these videos and subscribe, and also click the little bell if you want to be notified of whatever time I'm going live. I try to make it in the morning specific time, usually between eight and nine o'clock-ish. So um, all of that, coming to you you know not from my studio but from my beach today but because i am a long arm quilter i just love sharing the things that i have learned and it's a pleasure to virtually get to chat with you guys and quilt along with you so until next time happy stitching and i'll see you tomorrow